when you are active in the realm of the invisibles, nobody can come and tell you, be careful, I saw that. Where did you see it? I have access to where things are created. Anything that be, I know where you plant it. And the last time I checked, you were not there. <laughs> in the realm of invisibles, you can know people who appear there. Oh. There is, oh, I'll say this also with all humility. There is a sister here. A sister. I've seen her before. I've seen her in the realm. I'll, I'll give a little hint so that wherever she is, she, she will know that. I was carried on a Sunday. I laid my head like this. I was carried and I started seeing smoke, white smoke and songs of worship and then golden bells with purple ribbon on their base. Anytime the, the bell ring, my ear will have capacity to see. That is, what I will capture in my heart is only received by my ear. My eye has no, no, no permission to see those things. So, but my heart was developing pictures for any sound that entered my ear. And it's anytime they ring that bell, my, my, the picture will enter. While we bent down, because you, nobody will tell you, you will know what everybody is supposed to do. We were worshipping. I, I, saw, I saw her like this. I saw this side of her face. The day I saw her in an akazu, I was looking at her carefully. The realm of the unseen. Who said you will die of sickness? It's because you don't know where they planted it. Go to that place and uproot it. You can be begging people, pray for me, pray for me. And let me tell you one truth. A majority of those people are not praying for you. Brother, log in, log in. Go there, you two, go there. Go and check the land of your life. Go and check. That's where you will now find, as the, the day you arrive, that, that, that's when you, you will face a layer of attack. The, your attack is, why did you come here? Why? <laughs> you know the things that take you there? That one is not, Lord, give me admission. Give me, uh-uh. There are, there, there are two layers of prayer. There are the prayer of fellowship where you are just interacting with God. And because it's an interaction, there is a feedback you are receiving too as inspiration in your spirit based on the particular discourse you are initiating with God. In that prayer of fellowship, you can spend 24 hours because it's just a talk. You are talking and downloading inspiration. It is at that point you can say, I will stand upon my watch. I will wait to see what he will say. Because you are not the only one who is praying. You too, you are waiting to see what he will say from the other end. It is also at that point you would hear a voice from behind you saying this is the way. There is always a feedback in that prayer of fellowship. Number two, there is the prayer of decrees. In the prayer of fellowship, you are talking to God. In the prayer of decrees, you are speaking to entities, situations and circumstances. You are not talking to God. You are talking to mountains. And so in a prayer of decree, you are challenging. You are commanding. You are calling off. You are pulling up. You are planting. In the prayer of fellowship, you, are, you, you went there to receive inspirations. It is only through the corridor of fellowship that you will appear in the realm of the unseen. Then when you return, you have been fortified with the right knowledge to know what to pray for. People will just hear you saying, every pot, I break it. And they say, which kind of prayer point be this? You are the only one that know what you saw. There was a realm where they took you to. And sometimes you will just be praying or fasting or, or dreaming and they just showed you one item. You know, so, sometimes when people want to formalize this hallowed faith, they begin to push away certain very powerful truths. People must not be like you. People must not be coordinated all the time. You don't know what is on their head. You don't know the pressure they are inside. You say, what, what kind of prayer point is this? Oh God, it's because you have not entered the, the, the realm. For some of you, you will appear there this night. And then you will see several family members of yours tied in different locations. For the first time, you will say, who, who did this? You know why? Saviors, saviors shall arise. 
And when they are arising, they are coming to judge the mountains of Esau. Everything that was responsible for affliction, they are rising to judge it. But you cannot judge until you can have access to where realities are bettered from. And so, through faith, we know the things which are seen are not made from things which do appear. If God is blessing you this night, can you say amen? amen. I want to advise somebody. Take my advice free of charge. When you return home, log in. Log in. Use prayer. Pray until your spiritual senses are activated. You know how you log in? Suddenly you become conscious of things more than your five senses. The sense of discernment pop up. Suddenly you begin to know. You begin to know. How many of you have had those uh, feeling? The only word I can use now is called deja vu. Where something happens and you feel like it has happened before. And you try to follow the thread of the event and then everything disappears. If you, if you ever have that and you find out you have not had it in a long time, it means at some point you had access to the world of the unseen. There was a place where that reality played out. You captured it momentarily. But you wanted to follow the event up. But they showed you that it's only brief. You, your own is brief. You are a, you are a brief man. <laughs> you say, ah, I, 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 I feel swear, say, that this same thing you tell me. Yes. This is how seers are trained. When God wants to raise a seer, he, he begins to give them taste, taste until one day comes where they, they, they detest this realm and they want to live there forever. It is at that point a seer will stand like this. He does not have to sleep again. As you are talking, he can journey. He can enter the unseen and begin to bring matters down. But how can you stay there perpetually when even that once in a while oh, you don't know how it happened? You need to know what tool, what is your own password. For some of us, it's thanksgiving. The moment you begin to celebrate God, the moment you begin to rejoice. And for those kind of people, your life will be full of many resistance. So your thanksgiving becomes an offering because it didn't come from a place of convenience. Your natural disposition was to be confusion, complain, you know, all kinds of depression. But you chose to fetch thanksgiving out of that state of heart. They accept it as an incense. And then a password is open for you. For some people, again, it's prayer. And not just any time. They gave you a particular window of time. They say, pray in this time. If you miss that window, you will not participate. There is a realm of prayer. I, I don't know if anybody has entered there. Where you are praying, you are just praying. And suddenly you lost touch with where you are. Come on. You forgot, you, you naturally and sincerely forgot where you are. It is a realm that superimposed this one. Suddenly, you have you, you, you didn't even know that you were you were in Banawa. You forgot. You didn't know where you are. It is two realms that were calling your attention. It is at that point you are journeying into the invincibles. If you cannot see these things operational in your life, at least there must be a way God opens realities to you. Some of you, your dreams, your dreams are very sharp. No night goes that you don't dream. Unfortunately, it's been a while. You know what Satan does? They log you out. They log you out. They leave you. You do three days fasting, then you log in. They say, who is this? Who told you you can appear in the rank where we operate? And then they log you off. You know